Hello. Welcome back. Good to see you and all. And nice to be seen. Indeed. And How are you? What a week we've had. Very good. Uh, last Saturday we had James McIntosh visit us at our yeah. Come By and Craft, which happens every first Saturday in the month here. The shop is closed, yeah, because Saturday is our quietest day, yeah. Uh, and we've talked to you about this before, so we close and we go and hire out the local scout hut. Uh, yes. We have got the village hall there, but the scout, the scout hut, is a bit hut works smaller. better. And I, I brought my mother-in-law along for the first time, and she <laughs> has actually said she's like. I could get used to this. Oh, so. good. So we might have a, a, a new regular. Yeah, and it's a good um, thing to go to. And we've been doing that for the last Saturday, uh, mm. the first Saturday every month for the last sort of year and a half. Um, Gosh, that has been that long. Uh, yes, right. Mm. The time goes quick. And we often have uh, demonstrations to break up the Saturday afternoon. And I saw a local wool shop um, uh, have James visit uh, yes. on, on their Instagram feed. Yes. And I thought, this sounds good because he talks about his depression yeah, and, and the knitting. depression he went through and, and knitting. Uh, and we've talked about that before. We've Well, we've talked about it many times about well-being and how knitting helps yes, your well-being. Yes, sort of. Indeed. Yeah. That rhythm, I think James explained. Yeah, that rhythm it gives of, you the thing yes. to focus on. And it's um, so we it's, thought, uh, we know how important well-being is and, and coming together, that community. So we thought, well, we've got to have him in. Mm -hmm. uh, so I emailed him and... He came to visit. Yes. So this episode is all about the highlights. We're going to give you the highlights of, of his speech, yep. um, of his journey uh, through depression and his journey out of it um, through yeah. through knitting. It's a really good story. It's, he tells a good story. So yeah. so it is about all the highlights about what uh, James told us on his visit. So enjoy. Without further ado, let's introduce James McIntosh and Dr. Thomas Ernst. Thank you, Stuart. Good afternoon. This is our journey with wolves who tell me, where do you hide your stash? <laughs> Any ideas? Where do you put it? In bedroom. In your bedroom? In the loft. The loft. We don't have a loft. Um, anywhere else? The tiny corner of my husband's study. Why is it so tiny? <laughs> because he's got the rest of it. <laughs> 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 Have you ever discovered mindfulness for under management? <laughs> Thomas doesn't understand the need for extra yarn. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it is more important than Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who pays that bill in our house? <laughs> See, Thomas doesn't understand why I need both the DK and the worsted weight <laughs> in that particular colourway. You see, he'll just go, there's so much of it. He'll go, well, why? And I'm, he doesn't understand that I'm actually being really considerate. Because <laughs> I didn't buy the four ply or the iron in that colourway to match, you know? Does this make sense? Yeah. You see, Thomas doesn't understand that I have been mindful in my thoughts about my yarn hoarding. So, we have our stable, which stands for stash acquired beyond life expectancy. <laughs> How many balls does a man need? <laughs> We're talking about Merino. You see, knitting takes balls, KTB. This is a fact of life. A little spare for darning, perhaps. Really? <laughs> I must say, where we... You see, we live in Peckham in what I called the posh part, but it's all got very posh recently. And we couldn't afford to live there now, you know, if we... You know, if we just, <laughs> no, no, no. But when we bought, we, we saved a lot of money by next. Nobody wanted to live in our streets, but we did. And the South London Gallery have just bought the old sausage factory beside the fire station at the end of our road. And they now do darning classes for £40 an evening for two hours to learn to darn. Oh, wow. I know. You don't get cake. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you know, how much yarn do I need? A little bit for darning, but it's more that, it's not by buy what you need, it's that delicious. <laughs> 
soft color way that puts an idea in your head that you are going to knit this or crochet because I don't want to leave out my hookers. <laughs> you see, it's realistic in your head that you're going to do this, a jumper, a shawl, a throw, the list endless. But you go home and do you ever make it? <laughs> do you? Because <clears throat> if you do, sometimes. Well, sometimes. <laughs> but not always with me. <laughs> but we don't discuss these things in polite society. Yes, I have filled under my side of the divan bed. You know that wee drawer. <laughs> We've got built in wardrobes. We've got his and his built in wardrobes. <laughs> and above our his and his built in wardrobes, we have got our messy cupboards each because every man needs a messy cupboard. Do you have a messy cupboard, Stuart? Uh, a messy room more than one. <laughs> <laughs> or a messy shop, but then Jen helps me to clear it up. So. Thank you, Jen. Come to Beckham. So in my messy cupboard, I've got that full as well. Then I ran out of space. He knows now, but we were the headline at a big wool festival in Newcastle upon Tyne last year and uh, with this big audience and he nearly had kittens on stage <laughs> when I announced to the audience that he went to work one day and I took the side off the bath. <laughs> <laughs> because under the bath is dry, there are no moths under my bath. <laughs> And the side bath. And there's quite a big space under the bath. There is. By the waterhole. Mm. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Stable. Stash acquired, acquired beyond on life, life expectancy. Just for any of you that may be wondering about uh, acronyms. Oh yes. Yeah, we had a yeah. game and Stuart tested me and it turns out I'm rather rubbish at them. <laughs> yes. So you know, you can always go and watch that yourself. Yes. There'll be a link somewhere up here. What was it you struggled with? L-Y-S. Most of it? them. Local yarn shop. I know, shop. and then what was the other one? L-Y-S-O. <laughs> Local yarn yeah. shop owner. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, but ha have a play with that. But it was, yeah. it was, uh, funny watching that. It was a nice way yeah. in uh, for James to sort of yeah. lighten the mood to before. To get to the, the point though where you're hiding your stash under the bar. <laughs> yes, pulling out the side. That's intense. Mm. That's intense. A nice, nice way into his story. Um, but uh, it then this next section that you'll see. Uh, it then, well, he then gets to the crux of it really. Yeah. Of where he was uh, happily working. Uh, in China, doing a Very lot in China. Very successful. Uh, he was the only Westerner to present food television in China. And he won awards. Yeah, many. So. Yeah. Um, working really incredibly hard. And it was the, the, the day after uh, Thomas's birthday. Mm. And he just said uh, he couldn't get up. Um, yeah. And he talks about... Mm. He goes into it in more detail, uh, what that year was like. And yeah. And the... the, the the dog, mm -hmm. the black dog. Yeah, not not a great thing. No, often used, isn't it? They yeah, say. it's a term. It's a term a lot of people would use in regards to their depression. The black dog. It sort of always hovers in the periphery, oh. and it's how you manage it and how you deal with it. Yeah. I suppose with anything. So. So this next section will be about how how that black dog basically one day just bit him. Mm. Depression's what they call the black dog, and he arrived in our bedroom one day. It was the day after Thomas's 50th birthday. And he bit me really, really hard. I was in my prime at that point in my life. I was 35. I was diagnosed with what they term as a moderately severe depressive episode. What life loving me, this didn't make any sense. Things had bottled up one thing after another. I could not move. I physically could not move my leg down the bed. I wanted to move, but I couldn't move. It's a thing called a catatonic state. There was a final snap. Um, I'd been very publicly betrayed when I brought a lot of business home to Northern Ireland, where I'm from. 
um, over my sexuality that a gay man couldn't represent Northern Ireland in food on a global level. And it was quite in public and it was too much. Fear, anxiety, this catatonic physical state, panic, black, very, very black. You see, if you've been through the midlife crisis, take note, if, you know, because you get one chance at the midlife crisis, right? You've got a chance to make it spectacular. <laughs> I did. <laughs> you see, if you've got one chance at something, it has to be memorable. Mine was, like me, just fabulous. So much so, much so that some of it played out on primetime TV. It was humiliating. So during my depression, I was self-employed. I'd done very well. But when you're stuck at home and you can't do anything, it's amazing how much crap you buy. Has anybody discovered this? You see something, you just have to buy it to make yourself feel better for that moment. And then it arrives, and then you look at your bank account. You know what I mean? So, money had run out. My business had collapsed. And then the bank came from a car. Now, I'd worked hard for this. I had a lovely 3 Series BMW. And the bank came and took my car. Yeah. Oh, I mean. It's a hard thing. Oh. And I'm so impressed that he talked so openly about oh, yes. losing his car, yeah. being in such a bad state yeah. with regard to his mental health. And yeah. yeah, I cannot even begin. Well, I, I kind of know because I have seen a family member go through that. Yes, you, you know, can this empathize. idea of Yeah. Yeah, this idea of not being able to get out of bed, so the dog yeah. spitting him, I just can't imagine that. I mean, yeah. that's just not wanting to get out of him being in bed every going day. Going from such a high status yeah, job yeah. and everything else to coming all the way yeah. down again. For a year, for a year, Dr. Thomas was coming home, looking after him. Yep, making sure he's fed and yeah. watered. Uh, yeah, it's pretty intense. Oh, indeed. But then, which you'll see in the next highlight, is this amazing lady. Yes. Um, I would like to high five this lady yes, and the, just tell her the, how awesome she is. Uh, the ward sister, Suzanne, yeah. uh, who basically started the road to recovery by introducing knitting yeah. to him. And him discovering a pair of chopsticks yes. in the kitchen and <laughs> deciding to dry it himself. A, a lovely <laughs> moment. So I think you'll like this next highlight of him yeah. learning to knit. Yeah. I don't actually remember why I started to knit, but I found two chopsticks and a piece of string in our flat. I was so bored watching Netflix, honestly. <laughs> One CIA movie is the same as the other, I can assure you. <laughs> I had the inspiration to watch the YouTube to learn to cast on, and before I knit, I realized that I had knitted as something or other. <laughs> he comes home from work, I showed it to Thomas. Really embarrassed. Suzanne, I know well, Southern Irish, ward sister, no nonsense approach. <clears throat> She'd just land the end of my bed. She'd go, Thomas, now how is James today? And Thomas would go, there's the keys, drop it on the way home, would you? She'd sit at the end of my bed, I couldn't get out. <sighs> get your knitting needles out, James. Stick the right one into the loop on the left, twist it round, pull it off, now come on, keep going. <laughs> Sister knows a thing or two about knitting with patients and knitting and wellness. Handing a ball of yarn to a patient on the geriatric ward can, can stop the screams of anguish through dementia. There's something about a ball of yarn. Because Thomas will say that we must all relive our fears in life, either to go to the next stage of our life or to move on from this life. And it's really daunting when you have to stand and look at your fears. People like Sister Suzanne and the NHS, and I think this week more than ever, 
It's a treasure we must protect in the UK. And encourage therapeutic knitting into it. Now, knitting's never going to be prescribed in the NHS, but we can all do a wee bit of it at different groups and different things. It's what they call social prescribing, and it has to be in conjunction with other medications in terms of depression. <coughs> I started to knit a jumper on me big boys. <laughs> on me 12 inches. In beige alpaca. <laughs> it's an itchy bloody thing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't cry I didn't quite understand how sizing worked in the past. <laughs> uh, the picking up stitches has a lot to be desired. I mean, look, look, if you had a weak kink in your thing like that, I mean, no. Um, she allows me to say whose it is. It's an Erica Knight pattern, and Erica knows this story. And if it wasn't for this jumper, I would probably have committed suicide. That was the reality of it. So this itchy bloody thing <laughs> that's ever so somewhat shapeless, but this thing lives as a trophy to my well health and sits at the back of our wardrobe. <coughs> and do you know why I live for the rest of my life to my good health? Because the moths never attack the ugly items, do they? <laughs> no! <laughs> I remember the day, clearly, putting that thing on my body, looking in the mirror and for the first time in so long being <coughs> proud of me again. Albeit looking like a grown-up Von Trapp child with little curtains <laughs> on my garb. I remember looking in the mirror and thinking, this isn't black. This is beige. This is as bright as my head can deal with right now. My body was starting to thirst colour. See, colour's life, colour's healing. Colour gives you spirit. Oh, look at that. I know, I think oh. we can all relate to that. Yeah. Never oh, mind. goosebumps that moment. It's like the, the, when you finish a project, yeah. like properly finish yeah. it. It's amazing. Yeah. Never mind when your head isn't right. Oh, you know it, I mean? Yeah, indeed. But yeah. that's such a moment of achievement. Yeah. I, I can, when you hear the story like that, you can, well, that must have had a huge impact oh. on the point of the road to recovery. Not you the recovery, saw, but, but it's the, the road to you what? Did, you did the thing and you finished doing the yes. thing and you did yeah. an awesome job of it. Yeah. Okay, it's a bit, well, size is interesting. <laughs> you, yeah. But, so, yes. but he, you know, he finished it and it was yeah. just so impressive. Yeah. So impressive. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I just wanted to go and high five. Oh, I know. And be like, I know. You did it. Yeah. Um, so what you'll get to see on the next highlight is is basically his his road to recovery. Mm. Now he he is learning to knit. He is yeah. well. He's he, he knows how to knit. And he's but he's craving a bit of color. Indeed. His, yeah, yeah. That's he's, right. He's, he's started to he's, crave the color. He's got. He he can see actually that there is hope there. Yes. And he can see something in the future. Yeah. And he's and he he leaves the house with his mummy. Oh, Did, oh, that, that was a nice moment. So smart. Yeah, he could not. He got that to look forward to. Yes, it. getting out of the door and getting on the bus. And then off to John Lewis, you know, <laughs> typical. <laughs> but yeah, that was yeah. Yeah, enjoy. I started to get better. Mum tried to get me to walk out the flat one day. I couldn't leave the front door. <coughs> I couldn't. My head wasn't strong enough. Well, the next day we managed it. The next day we got down to the end of the road. The next day we got on the bus and went to John Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Mum did the ribs. I did the stocking stitch. Dr. Thomas put it in a boil wash. <laughs> <laughs> I had to start again. 
both of that boiled washed item in my career. You see, the tablets that I was on were starting to kick in. And this movement, right, this is called your circadian rhythm. And some people knit very fast, some people knit slow, but it's your body's rhythm that's unique to your body. It's called your circadian rhythm. <coughs> and this is your body's rhythm just being acknowledged. And you saying, hello me. And this is what's important. For me, each stitch became a breath. <coughs> each breath became a feeling. And that feeling, because I was told all my life my feelings were wrong because I was born gay. Because that was wrong, I was going to hell. You know? But then I started to notice those stitches on the needle, that they were tangible. And that if that stitch wasn't there, the whole garment would unravel. But that stitch, like my feeling, holds the whole thing together. <coughs> then I realised that I was worth something. Now the tablets are not a quick fix or happy pills. Thoroughly boring pharmaceuticals. They give you a baseline, a middle C, a lattice in which to stand, dreams so vivid yet cathartic, metallic tastes, nausea, enlarged tummy, erectile dysfunction. Well, they're awful things. <laughs> <laughs> but they allow you to stand up, but they don't get you to move on. Right? They don't get you better. Well, they didn't for me. But slowly, while I was on the tablets, and I was in a high dose of sertraline, while I was on those, the knitted items were growing on my needles. <coughs> my confidence was growing too. I was able to put on Facebook one day, I'm depressed. And the number of my friends that said, said message going, we've got it too. I don't think, really? <laughs> People are good at hiding. And then, by me being able to be honest about it, I had control over it, you know? The tatters of my mind were being mentally knit back together as it was knitting one stitch at a time. I was able to leave our home, able to have a life. I started to emerge again, a living, functional creature. So stitch in time, save my mind. I call it knititation. Nititation is a mindfulness practice that brought joy back to my life through hand knitting. I could see in colour again. That's the important bit. Tommy comes home one evening and noticed that I had done the laundry. Now, I just never liked doing the laundry in the house. That's his job. I'll cook the dinner, but he does the laundry. I wasn't exactly better at this point, but the point was I was able to do something. Because when you have depression, you cannot do anything. Whitney Houston was right. God rest her soul. <laughs> Learning to love yourself is the greatest gift of all. And when you can do that, no matter what people say or do, nobody can take away your dignity. And that's what I learned through knitting. Now, I... My dreams, I can have them again. My hopes are becoming reality. Life is good. Mum's got through chemo. We have to see what happens next. But the tumour shrunk. Thomas has learnt not to put knitted items into the boil wash. <laughs> <laughs> I can stand up here in front of you and say, I am James McIntosh. I'm back. And it's because of something as simple as knitting that I am here. Stitches are life and knitting patterns are the manual. The sum of the parts of knitting make you whole. A stitch in time save my mind. I call it knititation. Thank you for listening and inviting me along. <laughs> Oh, knititation, hey? I know. Oh. I think that's just such, it's it's a nice way of putting it. Yeah. Because it is that meditation mm. as you knit. It's that nice yeah. meditative movement. Yeah. And it's really and, good. Mindful and, activity. And that whole idea, I mean, that bit where he said about Whitney Houston. Uh, the, I have that song the, Learning to love head. yourself. <laughs> 
is the greatest gift of all. And I think, uh, you know, we go back to that alpaca jumper. Yeah. You know, he started to get that that pride from that. Yeah, and you can and, see it in and his And he face. made that. So that yeah. love for himself of what he'd done was there. And you can mm -hmm. see how that's just impacted. Yeah. And I think that was a just a really poignant thing to finish with. And he also yeah. said, we wrote it down, so stitches are life. Stitches are life and yeah. knitting patterns are yeah, other the manual. manual. Yeah. It's quite quite nice. And he you could see his inspiration because he's now written the book. Yes. I mean <gasps> I may have bought the book. And a bag. <laughs> I may have bought a bag. Well, why not? Because it's great. It's, yeah. it's all his patterns in there where and, and you know what it's like you and guys out there for knitting treats. patterns. There aren't many good men's patterns. I went and since mm. yeah. Yeah, there aren't unisex patterns, mm. which is really, really good. Um because I definitely I want to knit something for the other half at some point. Yeah. And there's some good jumpers in there, yeah. But uh, he's a chef, so you've got Trust. some great oh recipes in there. There's a recipe, Black Forest, uh, I think they're Black Forest yeah. brownies. I can't remember off the top of my head. Oh my God. I was just drooling over the recipes when I was flicking through. I'm going to have to make that and that and that. Yeah. And I'm going to have to. But when you come together, you come together um, here in the shop yeah. and we knit together and we sew together. We have a cup of tea and we have... Treats. Like a treat of some sort, a yeah. cake, or whether it's, it's you know, it's just one of those lovely feel-good moments. Yeah. We have a cup of tea, a wee bit of a cake, a wee bit of cake, yeah. and and you you, you share a laugh. Oh, and, indeed, and that that you know. community uh, combating loneliness. Some people in the shop here that is their 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 part of their week, getting yeah. out of the house. And I have spent it? many a few hours oh, yeah. in hysterics with yourself and Ting and Jen oh, and whoever so, else happens to yeah. come in to the point where you know you've got pains in your face because you've been laughing so much it's like that you yeah. know it's just so nice and it can do so much so it was it was great so thank you very much james for coming and, and yes. telling us your story and i and hope for you Dr. enjoyed Thomas it as well Indeed. for sharing that little bit of meditation yes, at the that, end. that that um mindfulness and it's worth noting we all can experience mindfulness in slightly different fashions it's something i'm learning myself in regards to meditation because sometimes we struggle to meditate and if you are depressed or you, you're at a serious low point, it can be really hard cool. to meditate yeah. because you're looking inwards when mm. you meditate. Yeah. But mindful activities such as knitting, it just gives you something to focus on. It could be mindful gardening. Yeah. I mean, you could go outside and do a yeah. bit of gardening, although based on the weather yeah. today, I'm not sure. But it's a mindful activity and something like knitting. It keeps your fingers busy. It keeps right. your brain active because you're thinking about the pattern. In, and you're in the moment, aren't you? Yeah, That's you're right. focusing on what yeah. you're doing. You haven't got time to think about, well, the brain can't think about anything no, else. No, this yeah. is it. You have to think yeah. where you are and what you're doing because you're counting and you're yeah. keeping up. Which with. is why uh, Dr. Thomas's mindfulness is it, it, without doing anything because it's about feeling the, when you're relaxing it's about feeling the chair it's about feeling you know the senses feeling being your aware body. of your body because yeah. it is yeah. very much about because yeah. we do a lot of, i do a lot of yoga and it's about coming into your body and yeah. feeling those sensations in your body yeah. and being aware yeah. of where you're at yeah. this moment which is so important and it's so nice i always like to if because i teach yoga and one thing i try to every now and then i remind everybody like if you can breathe just slow your breath and allow your tummy to expand because we hold oh, we everything we're in. all up here aren't we we're so if you're breathing being, up here that's yeah. really anxious breath yeah. so if you can soften your tummy and soften your shoulders oh, on a really know. busy day yeah just for a minute just for a few breaths yeah. it does you all power of good because it makes you come back into yourself and it can just slow things down a wee bit <laughs> So if you are a wool shop watching this, um, then by all means, go and contact James. Uh, go yes. to his website. All the details will be down below. Um, send him an email and get him in because yes. it was it was fascinating. It was and little, it's something it that we should talk about, indeed. Yeah. Um, and if not, I hope you enjoyed seeing highlights of his, his speech, uh, yeah. of his talk. And it was lovely got to pop in. Yeah, indeed. So here we are at Combine and Craft. We do this every first Saturday of the month. And uh, look, loads of us. I mean, we've got Stuart. 30 at the moment. On. Yeah, we're at, uh, expecting up to 40. So I'm standing in the kitchen where Ting makes all the tea and coffee. <laughs> There's Jen, I think she's just done round, round one of drinks. Yeah. Going round, possibly standing. Um, and then we're in just expecting James and Dr. Thomas. Ooh, in about an hour's time, so it's going to be great. And they're going to be standing in the middle there, doing their little talk. Um, it's great. We do this uh, once a month, every first Saturday, and we just it's just like a, a large social that we have in the shop. We just come to the scout lines, close the shop, and yeah, it's great. We're just crafting away, doing all sorts, knitting, crochet, 
Uh, you came to a bumpster thing. You can see. Mm -hmm. uh, embroidery. Really it is worth noting, there's a lot of wandering about at the combine normally, where people are like, what are yes. you making over there? Let me come and have a little yeah. look. So, and that's what's about to share. It's so nice. Yes, and thanks a million for watching. Indeed. And please yeah. like and share and tell all your friends. And don't forget to subscribe. Something worth highlighting. It's free to subscribe. Just Indeed. in case you're worried. There's a button down there. You click subscribe, get the notifications, yes. all the good jazz. Yeah. And you'll get to see us again uh, when we release our next video. Still yeah. with our curly hair. Look at that. We're getting longer. I'm getting shorter. He's getting longer. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye.